welcome back on Primetime Watchmaking in the News. And yes, we are not on the first Friday of the month. And yes, we should have published a new episode of our watchmaking road trip on this Thursday. But just a few changes and you'll soon understand why. So to start, a massive thank you to everyone. October has been a super strong month for us in terms of views. As we are well above the 500,000 video views, we've reached 45,000 subscribers and the watch time is just huge. It's fantastic, we're delighted. And now my biggest Christmas wish would be to reach the 50,000 mark by the end of the year. Sounds like a really nice milestone for us. So we'll see, but thanks so much and we just love all the commenting that goes on. Thank you and thank you. And a little amusing thing just happened to us as our video on the art of hot horlogerie published just a few months ago has just been R-rated by YouTube. You need to be 18 to see it. Well, this video was doing really well, I wonder why, and has already reached almost 150,000 views, so not bad, and I would have never expected to be R-rated talking about watchmaking. But now I'll immediately apologize because this is going to be another quite intense edition of Prime Time. A lot of news to share, many product launches, many cool watchmaking events to come, and some other industry info. But first I would like to talk about something because we've uh, naturally received quite a few questions uh, regarding Louis and why you haven't seen him recently. And this gets me to come back very quickly on the creation of the Watches TV some five years ago. I started with a very small team and after a year of activity, Louis uh, joined me. He was working part-time with us, three days a week, and uh, you'll soon understand what he did with the remaining of his time in a video that we will publish soon. But what I wanted to say is that uh, Louis was employed by the Watches TV and since I was not in a position to have him full-time on board and since he had a nice job opportunity, naturally in the watchmaking industry, well, it was time for him to move on and think also at his little family being a father since quite uh, recently. Anyhow, what I mean with all this is that we seriously love what we do, we want to do it the best possible way, but uh, this needs to fit in some kind of economical envelope. I don't count myself inside this one, my position is a bit different as the founder. I get to see and touch some incredible watches, meet some great people, hopefully you too, learn a lot, and I feel totally privileged by this, Not so I'm not complaining at all. But again, this is not a one-man show, we're a little team, uh, we continuously need to invest in shooting and post-production equipment, this is kind of a like a never-ending story and unfortunately this all comes at a price and my mission is simply to make the magic work at the end of the month. So to be totally transparent with you in terms of how we work and how we finance our activity, well we do get here and there some uh, sponsorship money which doesn't prevent us uh, being totally independent. Uh, we also sometimes produce films directly for some people and brands and very importantly we produce timepiece video pack shots used by some brands. So we also get some advertising revenue from uh, YouTube but uh, unfortunately this doesn't go very far apart if maybe we tenfold uh, today's audience or even more than that. Yes, well, five million views per month, that, that would be nice. So quite a challenge there. And then we have our Patreon campaign where some of you make a small uh, monthly donation. And thank you so much for this. Uh, we never insisted too much about this uh, Patreon thingy. Uh, not really our type. But I sincerely feel so grateful to those who, uh, who trust us enough to do this little gesture. It's really, really highly appreciated. And of course it helps. So thanks again. And I find this sincerely very touching. Anyhow, we often get asked uh, questions regarding items, watches, accessories, either uh, seen on our report or elsewhere, such as uh, where could you buy this, where to find that, well you see where I'm getting at, because I'm about to add a web boutique to what uh, we do and this could help us or at least contribute a little bit with our prime mission, meaning to continue to bring you the best video coverage possible. So we're currently working on the first inventory of this uh, watches boutique, things will also uh, take a bit of time, we're looking at uh, accessories, books, winders, you name it. But the big question is, uh, do you, what do you think of this idea? We're naturally open to, uh, the, to your thoughts, so please don't hesitate to contact me if you want to share any ideas, uh, either on the commenting section of this uh, YouTube channel, or you can send me an email directly at mad at the watchers TV. Yes, mad are my initials, and many people know me by this. Actually, some, of, some people only know me by this. Okay, so this was it for this little uh, prelude to prime time, and now let's get serious with some intense watchmaking news and let's start with the latest noticeable product launches and I will first talk about the limited edition introduced by AWC in homage to the founder of the company Florentine Ariosto Jones who left Boston to set his watch company in Schaffhausen, Switzerland in 1868. 
This watch is the IWC Portuguese Tourbillon Handwound Edition DH Craig USA and this name refers to the uncle of Mr. Jones who apparently helped finance the early stages of the company in the first movements. This watch comes in a rose gold case with a silver plate dial and you'll see the tourbillon through an opening at 9 o'clock. So a little tribute by IWC to the origins of the brand and this watch, limited to 27 timepieces, will only be available on the US market and special US retailers. And to conclude, this watch is priced at 50,000 US dollars and yes, we will use as much as possible dollars to make things easy for everybody. Uh, so I believe it's just another example of a brand uh, adapting slightly to the change economic situation because a limited edition gold case tourbillon would probably have been positioned at a bit uh, higher uh, price only a few months ago. And in that direction, and listen to this, we also saw Beaume Mercier come with a less than $1,000 watches with a new collection called My Classima, kind of the cheap version of the Classima line, an emblematic line for the brand. And I think it uh, just says a lot when Beaume is now chasing the Frédéric Constant territory. Well, we'll follow on this one, and I'm pretty sure we'll see a bit more of that in the near future, but quite a clear indication of where the market is going. But now let's go back into excellence territory as A Lang and Zene introduced a limited edition of 100 timepieces of its Lange 1 time zone watch. This has been a rather successful watch for Lange and one of the particularities of this uh, limited edition is its new case which comes with their proprietary honey gold, wouldn't mind tasting a pot of that one, love the color. And then there are just a few slight changes, for instance Berlin has been changed to Dresden on the 24 hour city market on the outer part of the dial and some other small details. So. Um, I I like to have to admit that I, I like this uh, watch a lot, a 42 millimeter watch, and I think it uh, deserves a full review by us. And the price for this limited edition is $64,300. We also saw Bell & Ross come out with a pretty nice looking BRS, uh, part of their square watch identity inspired by uh, aviation instruments found in cockpit. This watch comes in a rose gold 39 millimeter case. It's an automatic watch that can suit uh, for sure both men and women and is priced at around 14,000 US dollars. Zenith introduced a new watch in its uh, Heritage collection, the Heritage Tipo CP2. Yes, sounds pretty almost a bit like Star Warsy. And this is the modern version of a watch that was made for the uh, Italian military, pilots in particular, in the 60s. This new version naturally takes all the design features of the original model, including the 43 mm diameter of its case, but Zenith has now fitted inside it its uh, El Primero movement, and this, will be, uh, this watch will be limited to 1,000 pieces, and it's priced at 7,700 US dollars, so pretty cool and watch, quite sporty. Let's remain in uh, pilot watches and in this uh, vintage mood uh, as Longines have introduced a really cool watch also in its uh, heritage collection. This is the Avigation Watch Type A-7 1935 and this also is kind of a replica as the same original watch was produced in 1935 and delivered from then on to US Army pilots. I think this watch is rather cool on many aspects. It's a column wheel mono pusher chronograph. It's original with its dial at 40 degrees. Uh, this was made for pilots to help them read the time more easily while flying. And on that note, the original 1935 watch was much larger at 51 mm, again to help legibility. But in this case, this new watch has a 41 mm steel case, it has a small second at 12 o'clock, a date indicator at 6 o'clock, it's an automatic movement, has 54, 54 hours of power reserve, an alligator leather strap, and it costs around 2000 US dollars. So yes, I think that's a pretty good deal. Well, next, uh, we just saw another interesting version of the Urwerk UR105, a watch initially launched early this year, uh, which got quite noticed for its uh, Clou de Paris type of structure, or better known as the T-Rex, and I guess uh, this speaks to everybody. Well, the Dinosaur is getting chicer as it now comes in a red gold version, and it looks really neat. The full name of this uh, limited edition of 22 timepieces is the UR105 Raging Gold. And I can only give you the Swiss official price at uh, 67,000 Swiss francs without taxes. So approximately 67,000 US dollars. So yeah, it's not too complicated at the moment to compare Swiss francs to the US dollars. And to finish this uh, product review, we'll just mention MBNF that have now increased the type of machines they uh, associate themselves with as they collaborated with the Swiss pen manufacturer 
Carandache and they've just introduced their first co-branded writing instruments, the Astrograph, uh, because of course it still had to be linked with uh, space travel with uh, MBNF. Uh, as this pen uh, sure reminds you of a rocket with its launching pad and it comes in four different versions. It's a limited edition to 99 pieces and the price is set at 19,400 Swiss francs without taxes. So let's now talk about watchmaking events because November is going to be pretty intense and that's the main reason why we published this video on this Thursday because starting tomorrow in London at the Saatchi Gallery will be held the Salon QP which regroups plenty of exciting and independent brands including some British brands too. And not only will you be able to see a wide range of products but there are also some interesting roundtables that are organized and I clearly invite you to check the website of Salon QP if you're in London as this show will be running until Saturday the 5th uh, only, okay? So it's open to the public for a small entry fee but we have a good news as we have 10 available tickets waiting for you guys but of course you have to be quick and send us a simple email like last time uh, at the following address event at thewatchester.tv and we'll put you on the guest list. But the big happening of the month for the watchmaking industry will take place on Thursday the 10th as the Grand Prix d'Horlogerie de Genève, the GPHG, the Oscars of uh, watchmaking, will see many brands compete in 12 different categories on top of the ultimate prize, the Aiguille d'Or, the prize given to the watch that uh, stood out the most this year for the international jury of watch experts. As a quick reminder, this prize rewards the watchers that have participated. Okay, this may sound uh, very obvious, but what I mean by this is that it doesn't reflect all the watches that have come out this year. For instance, you won't see any watches from brands of the Swatch Group. It's been a long time uh, that Patek have participated and there are other examples uh, of this and it changes every year. So there's always a bit of politics in these kinds of things. Well, anyhow, it's still a cool and deserved event and may the best one win regardless of all this and actually this is precisely the reason why it's a great opportunity for some small brands to pop up. So we'll come back on the GPHG and give you the main results quickly after the ceremony with a series of fresh interviews of delighted winners. Well, which actually makes me think of this kind of surrealistic moment of uh, last year. So what can we expect in 10 years? Uh, the kids. <laughs> <laughs> So now, if you're in Dubai or in the region between the 15th and the 19th of November, I clearly invite you to go to the Dubai Watch Week. It's going to be the second edition of this uh, really great event. We were there last year and I have to say that I was really impressed by what had been put together by the Siddiqui family, the main watch distributors of Dubai. This year I will moderate one of the panels uh, whose theme is It's Complicated, so quite a nice and open theme and I have the pretty nice uh, guest on this panel, listen to this. François Pauljour, Philippe Dufour, Stephen McDonald, uh, that's the watchmaker behind the fabulous and very ingenious uh, Legacy Machine Perpetual by MBNF and Claude Sfer, one of the world's most influential watch collectors. So quite uh, some fancy people around me and I can't wait to moderate this uh, panel, it's going to be really exciting. But quickly, uh, coming back on last year's edition, this event was all centered on, uh, around the notion of watchmaking education. What can be done to better share the understanding of watchmaking and how not to fall into uh, simple marketing considerations. But uh, so it was really the, the idea is to focus on the notion of substance. There was nothing commercial, but mainly a great moment of sharing and constructive discussion. So looking forward for this one. So we will be there again and the event has gotten bigger this year as it will take place not only at the Dubai International Financial District but also at the Dubai Mall between the 15th and 19th of November and it's open for everybody. And sorry but last month I forgot to mention the CIAR, that's the watchmaking salon taking place in Mexico City. We had been there a few years ago with much less hair but I was told by the organizer that this year's edition went really well as Mexico is quite an important market for many brands. And we also didn't mention Munich Time Germany, a salon that just occurred and I don't have much yet uh, information about it. So again, sorry not to have mentioned these two venues. But November is the month for some important watch auctions uh, here in Geneva as all the main auction houses will host their sale between the 12th and the 15th. So you have Philips and its incredible trilogy of Patek uh, Philippe reference 1518, something never seen before, so probably some high price tags uh, will be reached there. And this uh, specific sale will take place on the 12th, but it continues on the 13th for Philips with some other lots. 
uh, Antique Worm will also have their auction on the 13th, and I'm interested in seeing what the triptych by Gégère Le Coult will fetch. This is a very complicated reversal to make it very short. Uh, but I'm also interested in the Tourbillon Pour le Mérite from Lange uh, from 1996. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting, we'll see. Christie's is on Monday the 14th with its uh, special theme auction around the 40th anniversary of the Batek Philippe Nautilus. And finally, Sotheby's on the 15th. So if you're interested in vintage watches, it's really easy to go on these auction houses website and do a bit of scouting and research. Since I quickly remind you that anyone can bid online and sometimes you can have a nice surprise and do some pretty good deals. It's for instance quite a, a cool way to enter the world of complicated watchmaking without having to pay this hefty price of that first buyer. Okay now, this is enough. Sorry for the length, but a lot to share and congratulations to all of you that made it uh, till here, till this very last second. And I guess uh, you understand why we didn't publish an episode of the watchmaking road trip. It would have been a bit, uh, a bit much this week. But don't worry, we will publish uh, this next episode on Thursday next week, things getting back to normal. So all the best, thanks for watching and sharing, thanks for your time, see you soon.